Hey, Dan here from Home Meets Road with one of our RV campground reviews. This video is all about our stay at Mesa Spirit RV Resort. Now, yes, this is a 55 plus resort. However, we did stay here and we are in our 30s along with our six year old under thousand trails. If you are a Thousand Trails member, you can stay here up to 14 days and then you do need to leave the park for at least seven before returning. We actually did that and stayed here twice already. More on that later. Now, before we get started, here are the timestamps for this video. Mesa Spirit RV Resort is located smack dab in the middle of the East Valley of Phoenix, Arizona. It's about 25 minutes from the airport, 25 minutes from Scottsdale, pretty much 25 minutes from anywhere. Now, when you arrive, you do need to use the south gate as it is the only one open and usually has a park ranger. The north gate is with a key card only. And unfortunately, no, you do not get a key card. That is something for permanent residents only. After you enter the park, drive north on E Street to the main office and line up in front of it. Now, a park ranger will come out to greet you and escort you to your site. If you're entering and it is very busy, you might not be able to pull to the left where they actually want you to go and you might need to end up on the right side. Now, I don't recommend driving through the parking lot of the office. At that point, I would recommend to take one of the side roads to line up. And if you arrive after hours, there are some hookups right here where they are going to ask you to just stay for the night and then check in in the morning. When it comes to the map, they did a great job. However, it is a maze. So familiarize yourself with the roads that lead straight to your campsite from the main entrance. Yeah, definitely familiarize yourself with it. When it comes to amenities, this park has everything under the sun and really can be considered a resort. There are multiple laundry rooms and they even have machines just for your pet things, mini golf, and even a Amazon locker. Now that Amazon locker is for full-time residents only. While we are on that, you can receive packages straight to your RV. We had no issues with USPS, UPS and FedEx. However, you do need to call the office and ask them to set you up with a mailbox and ask them for your address. The park is so big that it does have multiple addresses and it really depends on where you are located within the park. When it comes to our site, we actually stayed in two N6 and A162. We stayed in N6 for two weeks, left for seven days, and then returned for another two weeks at A162. No issues to report with the sites. They were level. Everything was great. Now, granted, we are a small trailer. So, yeah, there are definitely bigger sites available, even pull-throughs for your big rigs. Hookups, no issues to report either. It looks like the entire park is 50 amp only. So if you are 30, make sure you have a dog bone, just like we have pictured here. Mm -hmm. 
When it comes to connectivity, we have both Verizon and AT&T. Both were good here in the park. The interesting thing to note was that in N6, we had really fast internet and in A162, it was definitely a lot slower. But again, both worked fine. We didn't have any issues whatsoever working or streaming YouTube. When it comes to issues, the first thing is make sure you have a dog bone if you are 30 amps only. And yeah, depending on your plug, it might have some issues since it is kind of upside down. The other issue is too that the connections are kind of in a funky place sometimes and could end up very close to your neighbor or behind your neighbor. The other thing to keep in mind is that all sites, except for some of the major pull-through sites, are 90 degree sites from the road, meaning if you are a bigger rig and unfortunate enough of not getting one of the pull-through sites, you might have some issues getting in and out of your spot. Now, we didn't have an issue while walking around, but it is highly recommended to wear them all the time. And I'm talking about name tags. This park does require you to wear name tags, which they provide for you. And we definitely recommend wearing them when you go to the laundry or to any of the facilities. Again, we had no issues while walking the dog, but some might have issues and report you. Talking to friends, this park, it really comes down to if you have good neighbors or not. We had no issues whatsoever. We even got a lot of work done on the trailer and nobody ever complained. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a thumbs up so it will be recommended to others. And now let's answer the all important question, would we stay here again? And the answer is definitely. We had no issues whatsoever. We had a good time here and were able to get a lot of work done. And the funny thing is that we actually did come back already and stayed here technically a full month. If you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment below and I will do my best to answer it. And if you haven't subscribed already, we are a family of three living full time in our rebuilt vintage travel trailer. We share the good, the bad and the ugly of building your own RV and living the nomadic life. Consider subscribing and we hope to see you on the road. Thanks for watching and happy travels.